five. Okay, maybe then is just spoon that over. Now, and we're going to serve this with uh, the rye cracker. Yep. Mm, beautiful. And that's it. Hello, Swadi Ka. Welcome back to Swadi Cat with Bookie again. And today I got a beautiful guest coming to join me and to show me her style of cooking. It's Helly. Hey. Hello, Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm oh, welcome to my kitchen today. Tell us a bit more uh, what get you or what inspire you about cooking. Yeah, so um, I learned to hand cook from my mom. Like she's an uh, amazing cook, so um, I kind of started cooking with her when I was a little kid. You know, chopping the vegetables and like trying to lick the spoon if she was making the cake and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I watched her cooking through my childhood, and then that kind of inspired me to start experimenting. It didn't always go exactly to plan, but you know, <laughs> we learned. Um, but yeah, so my mum's from Finland, so a lot of um, the kind of inspiration for my cooking is from sort of finished flavours and that kind of thing. So there's a little um, nod to that in what I'm making today. It's kind of inspired oh, by... Lovely. Yeah, yeah. One of my favourite dishes when I was growing up was... Uh, Kesaketo? Yeah. Kesaketo? Nice, yeah. Or, or I did. You did it? Or, or, or lobiketo <laughs> as well. It was, um, it was like uh, summer soup or salmon soup something that my mum always used to cook so it's kind of stemmed from that but it looks quite a lot different to the original so wow uh, but I, I think i think it'll be nice yeah can't wait yeah. let's get preparing let's do it okay yeah. let's do it what have you got there you've got quite a few things lined up yes so we're going to start by making um a uh, rye cracker so it's a really simple recipe just like a few bits and pieces and there's some fennel seeds in there so we're going to toast those first and then yeah, I'll talk you through it. Right, cracker. Okay then, Ready to go? Me. Awesome, cool. So uh, first we're going to take some fennel seeds and toast them. Um, you want about like a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half, it depends on what you prefer. Okay. So we're going to head over here and toast those. <laughs> um, so basically done when it's just like a, a small bit brown but like not obviously too dark. And then we're just going to um, put these in the pestle, pestle and mortar and crush them. Uh, you don't want to turn it into like a proper powder, like you still want a, like a little bit right. of kind of texture to them. Okay. Um, so just kind of lightly crush. Would you like to crush them for me, Cookie? Okay, uh, okay, thank you. No problem. <laughs> but can you smell like when you crush them? Like, oh, you yeah. start to get like the aroma out. Oh my god, I should rub on my husband. Yes. So they're still, like I say, like. Quite a bit of texture to it, but yeah. um, oh, smell beautiful, right? So fragrant, yeah, lovely, cool. Um, and so for making the dough for the rye cracker, it's um, it's really straightforward. You basically just like chuck everything into the bowl, which yeah. I like. So um, what we have for this recipe is uh, 150 grams of rye flour, which goes straight in. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll put in the toasted fennel, um, 15 grams of butter, um, unsalted butter, or salted to be honest, like um, half a teaspoon of baking powder, and then just like a pinch of salt. Some salt, yeah. I would prefer like flavor. Exactly. Like seasoning. Country. I would prefer a little bit more than like. Most recipes say, right? You want to be able to taste it, so we don't uh, have a blood pressure problem, so we don't care. It's, it's fine. It's good for you. It's still young, so don't worry about it. So, um, so there's that, and then, um, uh, then just a about a teaspoon of um, molasses, uh, black treacle. Um, so. I never used this thing before, you know. Yeah. So in a lot of uh, Finnish baking, um, yeah. you have. It's, a, it's not this particular type, but mm -hmm. this is similar to, to what you use. So the next bit is basically just mixing it together. So we've got most of the ingredients except for water in there. Mm -hmm. So um, we're going to get our hands 
quite dirty. So uh, basically, you okay. just that mix just then. everything Get the dirty. together. So the first stage is basically just um, mixing it so it's kind of into into crumbs. So obviously, you've got the treacle in there, the butter, um, and just like blending that all together. Um, so it starts to incorporate into. Um, yeah, it's like a rough dough, basically. Yeah. So on top of the cracker, we're going to put um, some quick pickled cucumbers um, and a little bit of um, allspice and uh, cauliflower puree. Um, the quick pickled cucumbers are like a super traditional thing. It's like a like I remember my grandma making them, and like we, we would always we would always go and help. So um, you're going to learn the the special technique. Wow. Um, to, to make them, um, but yeah, that's going to go on there, and that's mm. going to be just like a little kind of side, side snack side to, um, to the dish, to the main dish. Mm. Yeah, make my mouth water already. <laughs> I love a little bit of like sort of uh, sourness mm. to the dish, yeah. and uh, sourness with the fish is really really good, good yeah. balance. Exactly, I think because we're cooking salmon, and like it's a very kind of, you know, salmon's like quite a fatty fish, and also the the sauce is like a cream sauce, so you do need something, something in there to, cut, to kind of cut it. So there's going to be some pickled onions and also mm. um, also the pickled cucumber as well. So, mm. Yeah, I've got a little something, something going on. <laughs> a little bit of some little something going on. on. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> something, something. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, cool. So um, basically the uh, treacle and butter is all kind of incorporated. Um, into the flour now, and then that's when we just add in the water. So it's um, 100 mils of just like cold water to add in, mm -hmm. and then gonna get even messier now and mix these all together. Right. So like this, and it will be quite a sticky dough, but that's that's fine. Like um, we're gonna roll it out onto the counter afterwards. Um, to make our crackers. Like I said, it's a super kind of simple consistency is what we're looking for. Um, you don't need to knead it or anything. Um, it just kind of comes together. And then we are going to um, roll it out. Cool. Um, so I'm gonna try to go as thin as possible. You know what, let me just wash the extra dough off. So uh, we're just gonna roll this out now. So I'm gonna go as thin as possible, um, I kind of turn it um, as I go to try to, two reasons, so it doesn't stick to the surface, but also mm -hmm. just so it's like an even um, kind of thickness throughout. So I keep going, actually that's sticking a bit. You can flip it over as well if it's like st sticking to, so that the more floured surface is on the bottom. And we're just going to cut it into whatever shape, but I like to do this kind of slightly square shape. So, is this okay? I don't know. I'm not going to like stab it. <laughs> so, if you want to use a ruler, you can, but there's, there's no real need. Um, rustic, exactly rustic. So, we're going to make these into kind of like cute little off center shapes. So, I'm just going to cut it up like this. Angular. Exactly, just because it looks it looks quite nice smooth across the stove. Mm -hmm. Like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three. So if you want to um, poke some little holes in them, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. These bake on 200 degrees for uh, between kind of 10 to 15 minutes, but it's just kind of a case of checking them and seeing. Golden brown, beautiful. So, so in the oven yeah. for about 10 to 15 minutes. I'll be back. So the next thing we're gonna move on to is the cauliflower puree. Um, that's one of the things that's gonna go on the crackers. Um, and then also the smoked mashed potatoes. Chopped up cauliflower. Yeah, it's simple. Pookie has kindly peeled the potatoes for me. We're ready to go. Um, and we're just going to slice them up and then uh, put them in some salted uh, boiling water. Right. So while you're doing that, do you want me to boil the uh, cauliflower first? Um, yeah, well, if you could just um, put another pan on Can the heat. Shall I put this one on this? Yeah, yeah that's okay. perfect. Yeah, thank you. Now we have the potatoes on boil. 
we got the yep. uh, cauliflower on boil. Yep. Um, ready to like so go to do the mash and to do the puree. Yep. So now what next? So we are going to make uh, quick pickled cucumbers. Like this is one of the most traditional dishes. I think like everybody's mother and grandma has like a version of making it. So this is the way that I was always taught to make it. Always done it the same, um, and I will never change it. Um, so you just take cucumbers and slice them really thin. Um, please don't laugh at my knife work because like I'm really bad at it. I just use my thumb as a guide to um, to cut really small slices. Um, and I wanted to go for these small cucumbers today just because these are going to be like um, just a little garnish that goes on top of the um, of the crackers. So with the cider vinegar. Yes. So uh, apple cider vinegar. And then um, just salt. some salt and sugar, and then chopped dill because it wouldn't be a finished recipe unless it had a oh, holy yeah. amount of dill. Yes. So, yeah, cool. So, we're going to put the cucumbers onto a plate. Um, flat layer so mm -hmm. the vinegar can get onto them as much as possible. Um, so, those are, get rid of that bit reasonably flat and then you just maybe put like a tablespoon of vinegar it's all of this kind of thing is very much um by eye most of these recipes are the type of things that like you know by eye your yeah. sometimes you you like <laughs> eyeballing it so the vinegar is on them and then we're just going to put a sprinkle of um sugar it's just like regular um white sugar that, Get sprinkled over, make a little bit more, and then um, some salt as well. Mm -hmm. Just, again, normal table salt. So like that, and then um, we're gonna just chop some dill to go on them as well, um, and keep the stalks because that's gonna be used in another part of the recipe later. So I again, excuse my terrible. Uh, Knife skills, it's nothing, nothing to write home about, to be honest. Now you're okay. As and long as it's chopped. Exactly. So, you want to cut those reasonably fine. Now, for me, I could put on all of this dill and it would still not be enough, but like, and I'm going to adjust the palette to see what other we people can, like. We can put a bit more. Put a little bit more? Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. 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 Let's go for it. So let's put, I think that's probably a good amount. And then once it's cut up nice and fine, then it just gets sprinkled. I don't know, it's quite a lot of <laughs> It just gets sprinkled over the cucumber. You put another plate over the top right. and then Cheek. hold it tight together as yeah. possible okay. and then you just want to like get like a good little shake going on. Mm -hmm. it's like, notice that I don't want to get my clothes covered in uh, dill and... Do I have to like shake up and down? Right, up yeah, and down. Uh, okay. Up and down. Up and down. Up and down. There you are. That was... So now that those are combined, that's like it's absolutely fine. You basically do that to just kind of distribute the sugar and salt. The onion is going to go um, with the smoked mashed potato, and all it is is um, a banana shallot or just any kind of shallot or onion that you want to use, um, and you slice it super thinly, um, and then all I did was mix equal parts of water and apple cider vinegar, you can use like white wine vinegar if you want, and then um, it. coriander seeds as well. Oh, right. And then you basically get a jar, you can use a jar like this if you like, yes. um, cram it full with onions basically, and then you just pour the pickling uh, liquor on top, and then um, it just does its thing. So, so that's what we have here, which we'll be using later. Okay, beautiful. And then and your this dill oil. lovely green elixir is uh, dill oil. So how do you do that? 
it's super easy to make and it's like so nice to, to drizzle on um, pretty much anything. Can you tell that I quite like dill? Yeah. You know, what are you doing next, uh, Hayley? Yeah, so now we make the smoked mashed potato. Um, so these have just been on the boil, like as usual, just until soft, like we're making normal mashed potato. Mm -hmm. um, and then they've just been like in the pan to kind of like steam themselves, so they kind of like dry out a little bit. Um, and then we're going to smoke it. So in here I have, and we're basically just going to burn those and then uh, cover this over with cling film, so the smoke can just kind of. Uh, go into the potatoes. So we're gonna right. do it twice just because I like to smoke it once and then like mix the potatoes so um, the full thing can get like really properly smoky. So Absorbing really in all the smokiness. Exactly. Yes. From top so to bottom. Do it. Um, so if you so I cover that over a couple of that. Great. You want to make it like a proper sort of tight seal around the outside except for where oh a little. I ruined it already. <laughs> do it again. So yeah. Uh, Probably tight still, and then um, then we will light this. So this just has um, the little bottom of it that kind of starts the airflow. It just like sucks that the air through. Yes. So we will turn that on, and then you just burn these little chips at the top. You just need them to be like smouldering rather than like kind of on fire. So once that's kind of taken to quite a lot of the um, the chips. Um, you can like blow it out so it's not just like the actual flame. And then you just literally just want that kind of like crackly smokiness and that's gonna fill into here. So that's probably about enough. Um, mm -hmm. So we can just turn it off and then uh, cover the little gap over um, and just leave that to sit. The first smoke I leave for like kind of five to 10 minutes and then okay. um, it kind of naturally um, will kind of leak out and once it's more get into exactly. the detail. So then mm -hmm. once um, once you notice kind of um, that the smoke has uh, started to like leak out a little bit, then we'll mix them and then smoke it one more time. Just so it's like Double smoky. really smoky good. Yeah. So, yeah. Now I thought that uh, we got the cauliflower here and the uh, blender. Yes. Cool. Um, so the cauliflower is ready and um, you, like I said, just need to boil it until it's like super soft. Um, if you can see like it, you're able to kind of break it apart with a spoon, like that's how soft you need it to be because you don't want the puree to be kind of chunky, it needs to be super, super smooth. Um, so this is absolutely fine and all we're going to do is put the cauliflower in the blender with um, some butter and cream, allspice. And that is going to be our puree. So I'm just going like to add it into here. And then, um, so we're just going to put like a little bit for now. And then, bit of breakfast. And then um, some salt in there as well. Salt. Yeah. There's a lot of cauliflower, and like the cream and butter kind of like. Um, they kind of like, they, well, it, they kind of like dull the, the, the like flavour of it, so you can put in like a decent amount of salt because you want it, you know, even though it's like part, you know, part of the plating and stuff, like it's there because you want to taste it, so you can add like a, a generous amount of, of salt. Why not? We'll put that for now and then see how we do. Okay. A little bit of a uh, mixed spice. Yeah, so this is allspice, um, and if you could put in, yeah, that's good for now, and then. With, as with everything, like we'll kind of like taste and adjust afterwards. This is so fancy. Cool. So next, we are going to uh, just make the mashed potatoes. So we have double smoked the potatoes now. So can you smell them? That's oh like yes. Really like properly strong smoky smell. Um, and all we're going to do is rice the potatoes. So uh, first thing is to rice the potatoes. Let's just these in here. If you don't have a potato ricer and you are a mashed potato fan, definitely get one because your mashed potato has never been as smooth as when you get one. So I'd have two at home. Hey, the potato is done rising. Yes, the potato is riced and so now 
gonna add in uh, the butter, a little bit of cream, really, really, really smooth um, and like properly creamy. So that is looking pretty good, nice and smooth. Um, so we can move that to a side and we'll just form it up um, when we're ready to serve. And now we're gonna make the sauce. Okie dokie. Awesome. Right, let me take this away. First things first, are going to be some fennel seeds in just the dry pan. Okay, so once those are toasted, we're just going to add in a little bit of oil and some butter. And then this just cooks until everything starts to go a little bit translucent. Uh, so once this is sweated down, like you don't need it to colour too much, um, then we're going to add in a big lump of the mousse. Um, so basically just want to cook off the booze, which I know is a travesty. So the vermouth is reduced down and then we're just going to add in some fish stock and then uh, reduce this down again before adding in the cream. Right, so that's reduced down, so we're just going to add in some lemon to make sure there's a nice bit of sharpness to the sauce. Um, about half a lemon is all you need. Uh, we're going to cook that off and then just add the cream. So this is reduced and then we're just going to add in the cream. Cook that down and then uh, we'll be ready to blend the sauce. We've got the vermouth that's reduced, the fish stock's been in here. Uh, we've cooked off the cream and then now we basically just need to strain it out. You want to kind of push it down as much as possible because like there's a lot of like, work that goes into a sauce, right? So you want to be able to make sure you get... Okay, great. So now we're just going to add this into the blender. Sauce out, and we have to put the spinach in for the yeah, green. Exactly, so the spinach just goes in a roll, um, so kind of two handfuls worth of spinach. That's a spinach. big leaf spinach. It's big spinach. leaf spinach, yeah. Um, can I use the, the small one? That you, can use, you can use a small one too. This is just the one that they sell in the uh, international supermarket at the top of my review, so uh, I always use this one. Um, and then make sure that that's on firmly. And then we're just gonna blitz this until it's like really properly vividly green um, and then strain it again. So let's do it. Hi, now our spinach with our reduced sauce. Yes, so it basically looks like we're on some kind of like health kick, like this is our little smoothie <laughs> we're having in the morning. Um, but no, this is actually just like a delicious creamy sauce now. And we're going to strain it again just in case there's still any kind of... Yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing that this is actually going to be fine, but you just want to make sure that it's um, super smooth and delicious. Just pass that through. Thank you. Okay, um, so this is the last kind of slightly chef -y element. So this is where we're going to get very kind of gastronomy vibes. So uh, this is just um, some chard that I've got and we're just going to really, really quickly cook this in a little bit of butter um, just so it wilts a little bit. And then for the plating, we're going to cut out some circles. Um, you don't need to get a special cutter. You can literally just use um, an icing nozzle if you just use the bottom half of it. It just makes really great little holes if you need to. So um, we're going to cook this and then cut the yeah. little holes from it um, for the plating. Okay. And then that's the last thing we need to do before the salmon. A little bit of salt. 
So the last thing to do is to uh, pan fry the salmon. So you want to get the pan quite hot and have a good amount of oil so that it doesn't stick. Uh, the last thing you want is the fish skin to be sticking to the pan. Really, really nice and hot now. Um, and then we're just going to cook the salmon. So when you first put it in, I like to move it around a little bit so it doesn't stick to the pan. So just move it until it's just got that first like little bit of cooking. And then after that, we'll just leave it um, completely as it is. And then that will just sit there. Um, obviously, you want to season it. A little bit of salt into it. And then just wait for the skin to get nice and brown and crispy. Okay, so we're good to go. Uh, salmon is done, all of the elements are finished. So it's just nice for plating. So salmon on first. Salmon first. Would you mind grabbing the mashed potatoes, please? Sorry, would you mind grabbing the mashed potatoes? Thank you. Take it down. Five. Okay, maybe then is yes, just spoon that over. Oops, pipe. Beautiful. Over the fish. Now, and we're going to serve this with the, the rye cracker. Yep. Mm. Beautiful. And that's a, so just pan fried salmon with a vermouth and split dill sauce uh, with smoked potato and pickled onions. Fantastic. Thank you ever so much, Haley. This looks absolutely stunning. Um, so if you like what we do today, follow us on swatdecat.com and also follow Haley on at Haley's Kitchen Table, Haley with two E's. Bye.